I'm motorcycling along a lane between South Hill and Cardington in Bedfordshire to see the Cardington Cross. The oldest road atlas of Britain is John Ogilby's 1675 Britannia. I've been interested for some time in a map from this great work which shows the route between Oxford and Cambridge and that's the frontispiece to the book and in particular an intriguing detail that Ogilby featured on this map marked as the Cardington Cross. It's not too clear on this screenshot from Ogilby's original but it's clearly seen on this John Senex 1780 copy of the Ogilby map. There, just north of Bedford, just after the Fenlake Barns, which incidentally are still there. Does such a cross still exist? With a little research I discovered that the cross does indeed exist, more or less where Ogilby noted it on his map near the village of Cardington. I set out to see it for myself. But first, I stopped off on the way to take a glimpse at another intriguing landmark. And this is the beauty of exploration by motorbike. You can just pull off the road, more or less, where you feel like it, to take a look around. Just pushing up nearer to the, gray, to the gate, off the road. It's there on the Ordnance Survey map, a large moated site, just off the lane between South Hill and Cardington. No one has much information about it. It is a scheduled monument listed by Historic England on their website. How could they not list it, given its size? But what is it? And why is it here in this relatively isolated position? The best guess seems to be that it was once a moated manor house of some sort. If it was, the manor house has long gone. I suspect any bricks and stonework have been scavenged to make other buildings in the area somewhere. There's no mott or castle earthwork on the site, so the water probably never surrounded a castle associated, for example, with the Norman Conquest. So the water was either decorative or perhaps served to contain and protect livestock, who knows? This main crossing across the moat on the northeastern side carries a trackway which is made up of red brick and limestone masonry. These bricks might well have originally lined the inner side of the moat too. Historic England cannot date the site, they simply state that the peak period during which moated sites were built was between 1250 and 1350 and by far the greatest concentration lies in central and eastern parts of England. Well, here we are in central to eastern England and so those dates probably apply. It's medieval in short. What isn't in doubt is that building over there that you can just see on the horizon. That building, or rather those buildings, are the famous Cardington airship hangars. The hope was that airships would be designed here that could reach out to all parts of the Empire. The famous airship, R101, crashed in France during its maiden, maiden voyage in 1930, killing 48 of the 54 people on board. That's a wonderful photograph of the airship over a farm in Cardington. And after that crash, um, any building of airships in Britain was brought to a halt. 
Those are the two airships with R100 and R101 inside. The airships were enormous and the hangars had to be even bigger and that's the famous R101 airship attached to its mooring tower near the hangars in Cardington. Well, those airship hangars remain iconic landmarks and it's time now for me to get back to a smaller landmark but the target for my ride out today. And to get to the Cardington Cross, I must pass through Cardington Village. When Ogilvy passed by the cross back in 1675, it was then on the old route to Cambridge, detailed in his road atlas. It was obviously a key landmark for visitors, for travellers to look out for, to reassure them that they were on the right road. These days, the cross stands hard up against the A421 Bedford Bypass, a busy dual carriageway which is still nevertheless the main route to Cambridge. The big difference is that travellers whiz by the old cross without even knowing it has ever existed. Turning left, this is the lane through the delightful Cardington village which leads to Bedford and there on the right is Cardington's church which had to be rebuilt at the end of the 19th century because the tower had become unstable. Those in the know will see that I'm riding a Royal Enfield 500cc single cylinder machine, ideally suited to this sort of country lane riding. And ahead is the roundabout that forms the junction with this lane and the busy A421 Bedford Bypass. Over the bridge here, and again, because I'm on a motorbike, I can just ride up this pathway and park up to take a look at the cross. I'm pleased to see that there's an information board. So I'll take a look at that. There's the cross in the distance. There's much on the board about John Smeaton. We'll get back to him later. But for now, let's take a look at what they have to say here about the cross. The Cardington Cross, erected by William Henry Whitbread who was the son of the famous brewer, in 1837, near the site of an earlier cross dating from before 1303. That later cross of 1837 was designed by the sculptor Sir Francis Chantry, whose work can be found in many towns, churches, art galleries and great houses across the country. bypass and the connecting road were built in the 1990s. It's taken a lot of traffic out of Bedford and here we are face to face with the cross or rather the crosses. There's the 19th century cross erected in 1837 and to its left is the stump 
of the medieval cross dating from sometime before 1303. That's the cross that Ogilby will have passed back in 17, or rather 1675. And here's an intriguing little item, an old civil boundary marker from 1934 showing Bedford on one side and Cardington on the other. I think Bedford's boundaries were extended sometime in the 30s. And at the base of the later cross is an inscription. But I'm afraid I can't make it out. Back to that information board because we can't ignore Smeaton's Bridge designed by John Smeaton and built for Samuel Whitbread in 1778. There's a pathway just behind the cross which takes you down to the river and gives you an amazing view of those two iconic airship hangars. And allows you to see Smeaton's Bridge. John Smeaton was an 18th century civil engineer responsible for the design of bridges, canals, harbours and lighthouses. Perhaps he's most famous for the Ediston Lighthouse. But well, here's a, a much smaller example of his work, but no less successful for all that. It's still carrying traffic. Indeed, we crossed it just now to get to the bridge. He was the first self-proclaimed civil engineer and is often regarded as the father of civil engineering. And this bridge remains a tribute to the durability of his designs. And there on the keystone, are the initials SW for Samuel Whitbread, the famous Bedford Brewer who sponsored the building of the bridge. Indeed, the Whitbread business continues to be successful to this day in the hospitality sector. So, it's back to the road. After a happy day of exploration by motorbike. For now, I'm done.